All right, so Hello, we're gonna man. solve this graphically. Solving basically means is what does x equal? Now this is something to the third power. It doesn't look factorable because you see a bunch of decimals, right? So let's go ahead and put it into our calculators. X cubed minus 1.1 x squared minus 65.4x plus 229.5 and then I'm going to press zoom 6. What the zoom does is it resets what I had previously and I'm, when I put it to 6 it's telling me I want a negative 10 to 10 and a negative 10 to 10. If you see three little dots moving in the top right corner, that means it's thinking. Zoom 6. Do you see my little three little dots moving in the top right corner? And this is my graph. Class, can we see the whole graph? No. No. We can't see the whole graph. So what we're going to have to do is, this is the harder part for students, is changing the window. Now, it would be foolish to zoom out because zooming out focuses on just the origin. If you keep zooming out, it may not be an accurate picture. Okay? So we have a roller coaster here, a polynomial, and we don't know what it looks like. So if we press window, Let's change your y minimum to negative 500 and your y maximum to 500. And the y scale is what do you want every tick mark to be? Let's just say 100. Let's go ahead and press graph. Ooh, looks nice now, right? Now we can actually see kind of like a picture of our window. Class, what's the highest degree? The highest power is 3. This tells you the maximum number of x-intercepts. Class, what does this tell you? It doesn't tell you the total, because sometimes we don't have three, but we can count. Ready, set, go. One, two, Okay, we think it's two, right? But remember, in today's lesson, this is called not seeing the hidden behavior. Originally, we couldn't see the whole roller coaster, and now I kind of want to zoom in in this section. So let's change the window. 4.95. 5.15 and then you'll change this one to negative 0.1 and to 0.1 uh, count by one press graph What we did there is we zoomed in on the bottom right of the graph and we kind of saw now we thought it was only touching the x-axis once. It's actually touching the x-axis how many times? Twice. Twice. Let's go ahead and calculate the x-intercepts. Second. Calculate. Zero. This one says, I'm going over here because I'm already left at this point. Left bound. Right bound, exact, and it tells me one of my zeros is 5.1 comma 0, so I'm going to write that down. I'm going to do it 
again. Cal class, what's the calculator command? Second trace. Whoops. Second trace. Which one? All the way over there. Running through the quad. Running before the bell rings. Before they close the door. Run back to your next class. I'll go to the next class. Five exactly, so five comma zero. And I should have kept that the old window. Gotta go back. You could say there I'm gonna go back to the old window. Negative ten, ten, one, negative five hundred, five hundred, and count by one. So what we just did is we just found the two x-intercepts over here, although it just looks like one. And then I'm going to go way over here. Going down the roller coaster. Whee! Right. And the other one is negative nine. Sketch, sketch, sketch the graph. <laughs> Negative nine zero two four five six seven eight nine. Labeling it. It's called an x-intercept. Five zero. Intercept, and it's really hard to see, right? To to be able to show 5.1, it's like right next to it. And you can also uh, tell its scale. So, one, two, three, four, five. That's 500, counting by 100s. And then our our graph looked. like 200. It goes through there. And a graph looks like something like this. So here's the big idea. When I give you a function, put it into your calculator, uh, just think about your original graph. The original one just had like a straight line and then kind of bump, and then you're going to have to change the windows so we can see everything. Yeah.